This is Space Cats Peace Turtles, the unofficial podcast for Fantasy Flight's Twilight Imperium. Episode 89, Player Profile, EJ. Music by Ben Prunty, featuring Matt Martins and Hunter Donaldson. Daddy likes it. Such a little goober. Yeah, well, speaking of daddy, um, we are doing a daddy-less show today. I don't know if everybody knows, but the the, the relationship uh, in the show Space Cats, Peace Turtles is that Matt is the show daddy, and I am the show buddy. Um, and then I am uh, actually joined here today uh, to replace the show daddy with uh, an actual daddy. Whoa, look at hey, that. Hey, what's up? Um, EJ is here today. Yeah. Say hi, EJ. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. So today we're going to do um, a player profile about EJ. I'm trying to think if there's any business I should cover. I bet actually if Matt, when Matt listens to this, he's going to be like, Hunter, you were supposed to mention the blah, blah, blah at the beginning. Let me think. Is there... Um, well, hmm. you should definitely go see their live show at Gen Con. Yeah, I think I think that's probably already been stated. In yeah, but the... you know, go see it. Uh, this is from a third party. I'm going to be there. Uh, I don't think I have to pay for it, but we'll see. No, we're not going to have you pay for it. That's okay. for sure. Yeah. Um, but but other other people and uh, and other people actually, it's technically as far as the show is concerned, free for everybody that wants to come. Um, however, Gen Con. Like they got to get there, so I think it will cost you like a ticket, which is like two dollars. But we're we're actually not charging at all for the show. So if if you want to come see it, it's free. It's gonna be really fun. Uh, we've actually started uh, planning it now. Um, it's gonna be uh, one of those dreadful humor episodes where it's all about the humor, uh, which I know is not everybody's cup of tea, but it'll be fun. You'll you can see. Me and Matt and uh, and EJ will be there, although he, w- he won't be on the episode, but he will be there and you can say hi to all of us and it'll be really fun. Um, I think we're about to knock off Diplomacy off of the Game 2 Patreon um, thing, but I don't remember. But I think Diplomacy, I think your days are numbered. Sorry, and Root. It's, it's fixing to be... Well, sorry, Root the person, yeah. not Root the game. No, no, um, yeah, not Root the game. Sorry, no, Root. Root, Root the game's doing very good mm-hmm. um, right now. So there will be another uh, phase of voting, with uh, the three games remaining being Dune, Root, and Game of Thrones board game Mother of Dragons. Okay, and with all that business out of the way that I did not like doing, because like I said, I'm not the show daddy; I'm the show buddy. Let's talk about you, EJ. Oh, and also, well, wait, real quick, a real quick teaser. Um, at the very end of this episode, after me and EJ get done talking about EJ, um, we're going to play a game that Matt has devised to kind of show off my general lack of rules knowledge. Because I am kind of like, you know how like, since you have a smartphone and the smartphone can like, like do math, you've gotten like a lot worse at math because your smartphone knows how to do the math. That's how I am with the rules of Twilight Imperium and Matt. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, hey, EJ. Hey. Uh, I want to start with, I want to start personal and then kind of work towards Twilight Imperium and board gaming in general. EJ, yeah, sure. when when is the first time that we met me uh, and you? The first time that we met, I believe, was in high school, but I'm not sure that you remember that too much. You were a couple of grades ahead of me. Uh, we were we were just hanging out. Uh, you know, you you had a project that you had to do, and I was helping you out with it. But uh, we we were in uh, something called forensics, which uh-huh. is like a competitive like drama thing in high school, where you do like acting and like you like read f- in funny voices, and I think also debate is in there, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of like the debate team. That would be the most, but but we did the acting side of the debate team, basically mm-hmm. the, the fun the fun part, not the boring debate stuff. Yeah, the goofy kid part. Yeah, and anyway, I met you then. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you remember that, um, 
but I don't. I don't. <laughs> well, I also like. Uh, I also was a, a late bloomer, so like I didn't look anything like I looked uh, from sophomore to junior year. How did? So you've said that a couple times. What do you mean by that? How did uh, you look before? I was this is how you look now. I was five foot four and like one hundred and fifteen pounds soaking wet. Like, oh I my was, god! Yeah, I was like a child. I was like an elementary child in high school. Like. For, for the first two years, and then, like, over that summer, I didn't uh, talk to anybody, and then all of a sudden, I showed back up to school uh, my junior year, and people didn't know who I was. Wow. That was the wildest thing. I had to reintroduce myself to my friends. <laughs> wow. So, there's that. Anyway, uh, yeah, I actually, we actually became kind of buddies playing TI, uh, or the first time I remember seeing you, I guess, uh, post that was... Uh, uh, probably when I was 22, it's probably five years ago now. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and you and Matt and uh, everybody in uh, the living room, Sean was there. There was a couple other people there. Uh, you guys, that was the Butt Brothers game. I was there. I was present for that game. Uh, right, but you but you weren't in the game. But you I just, wasn't you in the game. witnessed it. Right, I actually came in. You guys were probably already in round two or three. Now, TI3, it's a lot different. Round two or three was probably already two or three hours into the game. Uh, right. Whereas, well, especially because we were playing with seven players that night, so I guarantee. And also, we weren't as good at Twilight Imperium, so <laughs> yeah, I guarantee it was. It had taken way too long to get well, to the point we were at. Well, and at that point too, you know, uh, you guys had just started playing with expansions galore. So, like, you know, the TI three expansions are some of the most, you know, they're some of some of the most uh, tedious things where the you know the small little rules that. You had to look up like every five minutes. And, uh, oh, yeah, like there yeah. There was and, a lot of that. Well, and they also just added more <laughs> optional rules on top of <laughs> yeah. a system that already had a lot of optional rules. Right. Uh, and we and we did play with some of them. Like, we, we liked... Distant um, Suns? Yeah, we liked Distant Suns. Well, we also liked we liked the space version of Distant Suns. I think it was called, like, Final Frontier or something yeah, like that. that um, we would play with uh what were the little like the space mines that you could drop (laughs) oh yeah and i don't even remember like if we really understood (laughs) how those were supposed to work or if we would just throw those into the mix you Um, did i think you just yeah whatever we would play with mercenaries sometimes with that like special trade card we play we played a lot of weird uh stuff back in the day um but so you got to witness the butt brothers game uh, do you remember? So, so, and and this was the first time you came around and saw Twilight Imperium. This is the first. No, I had played a couple of times, but I don't think that I had played with you or mm-hmm. Matt at this point. I had been playing with Alex, um, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I'd only played like a couple of times. And I remember the reason I came over was because I heard that there was Twilight Imperium going on, and we were going to play a board game of our own. So we were off in the kitchen doing whatever we were doing. Uh, and you guys were sitting in the living room, and all I remember is Sean just yelling. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of yelling from Sean, and a lot of yelling from you, and a lot of yelling from Matt, and uh, it was sounded like a wild time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it. We, I feel like there's not a single game that we haven't talked about more than the Butt Brothers Coalition game. Um, someday we should just like reenact it or something because it was so <laughs> it, audacious. And you could ridiculous. never, you can never reenact that. It was absolutely because <laughs> it was so buck wild. There was there were people that you guys were like going off into separate rooms and like really like you would be in there for twenty minutes. There would be times when people would be off negotiating for for minutes and minutes on end, and everybody else at the table was whispering, and it was just this like. It was so it was so wild because I think we have tried to capture something similar to that aesthetic mm-hmm. since then, and it's just like you really can't you really can't capture how wild you guys were that night. I don't know if you were drunk or what, but it was it was absolutely insane. Well, I think I think a key element to how wild that game was was that originally me and Matt and Sean were uh the three people that played twilight imperium the most and we i feel like had kind of a rivalry between the three of us um and in fact we even played a lot of three-player games uh which is not if if anybody listens to the show you know that i pretty much only like playing at six player at this point and i definitely didn't really care for three player uh even when we were playing it in ti3 but sometimes we just didn't have enough people so that we would play it like that so 
I think the whole thing about the Butt Brothers game was that we were sitting down to play a normal game, and me and Matt and Sean all had people in between us. Um, we did, we weren't neighbors with each other. In fact, we were like kind of all specifically, we were making like a little triangle mm-hmm. um, within the game. And I think what was so wild about that was we never imagined that one of us would bend the game to such an extent in <laughs> order to win. And Sean, of course, it's, it seems it's silly Sean. now because definitely <laughs> Sean has that L, that. That oh, part yeah. inside of him. But I think that was the first time we'd ever seen that really come out where Sean was willing to say, we're going to change the game yes. to be that I, a new game. And it's where I'm most certainly going to win. <laughs> um, and the fact that he was able to convince other people to play in that manner, I think was just really uh, wild, wild for me and Matt yeah. uh, who played the game very like, to the, no, to the letter. This is, yeah, this yeah. is how you're supposed to play it. Um, and we, and the thing is, with any, with if it had been anybody else, we would have just been like, "All right, fine. It's just a goofy game. Doesn't matter. Uh, this is this is a theme game, and nobody has to play for real." But because it was Sean doing it, we had to stop him, like because he he couldn't upset the balance of our ongoing <laughs> three way rivalry. Um, with this undeserved win. Now, at this point, I would say Sean is the less connected to Twilight Imperium, but in those days, he he played just as much as me and Matt did. Right. Um, well, anyways, I want to I, I, like I feel like this question might the answer might be kind of obvious because we just talked about you witnessing the like this like really wild crazy game. But what about T- Ti made you want to play it? Like what 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 appealed to you about it? Um. T- what's weird is we started playing kind of towards the end of TI3's like kind of you know high point right like we we mm-hmm. played right there when okay all three expansions are out you know uh, we're all getting together uh, you guys like twice weekly uh, you know me like once every other week at least uh, and I started playing games with you all and it really uh, started to kind of form what my adult relationships were <laughs> in terms of my <laughs> friends like uh, it, it was kind of wild. Uh, I mean, I'm still in contact with, you know, a lot of, a lot of those guys I hung out with in high school, but, uh, you know, uh, after high school, you know, people move away and everything and that's, and that's all fine and good. But like, you know, all of a sudden you're trying to find, oh, well, you know, who's my new group of people that I, that I want to be around. And really it's kind of crucial to the people that you're going to be around for a long time at that point, because, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of winding down your college years, you're starting to you know, start getting into the workforce. So people that you uh, that you start to associate yourself with at that time were going to be the people that you associate yourself with for a long time. So, mm-hmm. so I thought it really kind of solidified, like, uh, these are going to be my adult friends for a long time. And sure enough, you know, here we are five years later, and I'm uh, doing a player profile episode on your podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. You actually just blew my mind with your response, though. I didn't realize I was supposed to go into the workforce. <laughs> I... <laughs> Have messed up <laughs> oh, on no. a pretty big <laughs> way. Actually, oh, no. I just realized. Uh, I'm looking around. I'm looking at my calendar. It's got a lot of stuff on it, and, and none of it's none work. Of it, none of it's well. I I would say it's work, but I would not say that I will get paid to do it. Oh, but no. there is that. Um, yeah. We've, uh, all, we've all been there. That's that was uh, that was quite a wild. Uh, I, I like the way you just contextualize TI actually um, because I feel like that is part of the reason that I feel connected to you and to like Connor and Alex is because of those days that we spent playing TI back then. Uh, and it's interesting that Twilight Imperium can create such a strong bond like that. Well, it's, it- interesting enough i i like that you put it that way like uh, it does create a strong bond but there's there's one thing that you can kind of gather and I've, i'm sure i've talked about this before um where uh, you know board games have a weird way of kind of bringing people's kind of character out in a, in a way that that some some things sports you know they don't really do what what a board game like ti especially which is uh i think a lot of people ignore uh, and not, and I'm not saying in your community, the podcast listeners, but people who are casual players kind of ignore the social aspects of the game. 
mm-hmm. and, and, and TI3 even more so. It was a way more social game, I, in my opinion. I, there was a lot, at least the way we played it, we were always above the table. We were always, uh, you know, there was always a, a larger meta game going on uh, between this, you know, the six, seven of us that played. And so it, it does kind of form, like, do I... Do I like this person? <laughs> like, do right. I like spending seven? Or, because with Ti, it was like this. Do I like spending seven or eight hours in the same room as Hunter? Do I like yep. spending seven or eight hours in the same room? As, and it, and the answer was always yes. Like, it wasn't like you know there were times where people got salty. There were times where you know you you felt like you just wanted to flip the table. But like at the end of it, like we enjoyed. I think more than anything, at least me. I enjoyed spending the time with my with my people, and and I felt like you know I didn't have to win the game in order to to get to spend time with people that I really wanted to be around. Right. Um. Who? This is a here's kind of a petty question, but who do you feel like was the saltiest back in those days, back in the early the the TI three days? Who do you remember being the saltiest? It's hard to say because. People manifest, I guess, their their kind of anger towards the game a little bit uh, differently. Uh, so the most outwardly salty, um, I guess it'd have to be Matt, and probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would have to be, and it's not. It's not that Matt is salty in a way that that makes you feel like he's mad at you in a lot of ways. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it's like, is Matt mad at me for the thing I just did? Uh, but. But a lot of times, the way Matt manifests it is, I think he gets he gets he Matt has to play this game against all six players, including himself. Like <laughs> there's one thing there's one thing that Matt does that nobody else does, and that's that he plays the game also against himself. And I feel like most of the salt that you see from Matt is just is just purely hatred for the decisions that maybe he made or maybe a decision yeah. that you made throughout the game. Oh, I like that actually. That's that's I, at first I didn't quite understand what you mean by the what you meant by the he plays against himself thing, but so often the salt that Matt experiences <laughs> it will be because he made a choice before. A good a good thing to cite actually is the most recent holiday special mm-hmm. where he did the public execution mess up. Yep. He gets pretty salty throughout that entire game basically because of a mistake that he made. Like right. a like a and that's and that's the person. Yeah, oh man, if you want to know who Matt gets saltiest at, ah, it's himself it's, still. It's himself. <laughs> it's yeah, it's himself. definitely more than any other player. Right. Oh wow. That that's that should have been in the Matt player profile <laughs> it right there. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's interesting. But uh yeah, uh so uh, yeah, I, I don't think that anybody else, like, uh, you know, everybody else didn't manifest it, uh, their saltiness in that way, because Matt tries to explain through those things, so. Yeah. Uh, what, what, so, what is, uh, I, I'm just going to ask an indulgent question here, because mm-hmm. we have played a lot of Twilight Imperium together. What, in what way does my salt manifest itself? Because I've been very concerned about my saltiness uh, like, for lately. the past year. Yeah. Uh, and I have been trying to improve upon it, and I'm just wondering what what does it feel like? And I don't know. I actually feel like maybe it might be through luck or just just weird circumstances. I'm not sure I've ever had to. I, I don't know that you've ever been on the other end of of me being salty. I'm not really sure. There there was there have been times where I've been on the other end, but have been able to deflect it onto somebody else. Um, uh, this, which is kind of like, I guess if I had a superpower, that would be it to being able to deflect people's anger away from me, at least yeah. in TI. I, I generally have a pretty good time of being like, no, 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 that's somebody else. Um, but with you, it's, it kind of comes in waves. There's this wave of initial, uh, you know, uh, F you that, that, that comes from, from, mm-hmm. from Hunter, right? Like it's. It's the wave of initial, why would you do that? Like, the logic is obviously trying to spin through your head. Like, mm-hmm. you're trying to sit there and reason. The mm-hmm. second wave is is all out, it's just all out messing with that person's psyche, it feels like. <laughs> the, second, the second wave is, is I, I may not be able to beat them at the table right now, but I am going to, to wear them down mentally. And so, like, it's this... 
it's this all of it like and i've seen you do this where it, all of a sudden it's not about the game it's about the game you know like it's, <laughs> it's this it's this weird thing that you just like uh that it it kind of comes out now it kind of finally tails off into if if it goes well for you you kind of you kind of reel it back in you're still kind of salty you can kind of Generally, you can stay in phase two and then kind of pull it back out uh, mm-hmm. if, if things start going well. But if things go bad, which doesn't happen very often, then we can actually cite that four-player Muwak game you played a few weeks ago where uh-huh. you're just done. Like mm-hmm. after, after something doesn't go your way, like in, in, in that case it was not being able to hold the whole home system of a player that you were trying to take. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's over. You're like, yeah, well, that was that was a fun game of TI I played, and then it, it then it would eventually move on to stage stage four, which is just sarcasm and at the expense of everybody. Uh, <laughs> and so that's that's kind of the stages of Hunter's st- saltiness uh, that I've that I've uh, observed over my time playing TI. Wow, you just you you really you you really nailed uh, I think both of us. Uh, yeah, I uh, I I really want that to change. I, 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 I really I really want that to be over because I'm I'm tired of falling uh, into that. Uh, I think you know that four player Muat game was such a death trap for <laughs> my saltiness. <laughs> like, uh, and yeah, uh, I I am I'm actually not surprised at all that I that I failed to that extent, and that you did get to see all four phases in. Just displayed, just well, on display. I will say this: uh, yours, yours, your saltiness is one of the few that actually fuels you. Um, there's some people who, when they get salty, it actually shuts them down, and mm-hmm. and it forces them. Like for me, me for instance, uh, uh, my my when I get salty at somebody, and it's it doesn't really manifest itself in anger any like anymore. I, like, I've been playing board games long enough to where I understand this is just how the game is played. And right. so now it, it kind of comes out in a way that's like, all right, and, and TI, TI especially, it's like, all right, I'm the Turtles now. Like, <laughs> it's like, I am no longer EJ, I am the Turtles. Yeah, and like, yeah. I, I will do whatever I can to like, to, to defend my honor as this, as this faction. I start to get like super into kind of the, uh, the uh, text on the back of the cards and like trying to, mm-hmm. trying to figure mm-hmm. out, you know, what would they do in this situation, you know? And, uh, and that way it kind of distracts me from the anger I might feel towards somebody for doing something that I feel is unwarranted. And, right. and it, and it kind of distracts me too from, uh, from the, you know, fact that I'm playing a board game and, uh, and in the end, it, you know, I, I'm still going to be friends with these people after I'm done. So, uh, yeah. that's, that's generally how I go. I've definitely witnessed that in your in your play that you kind of lean towards theme if like let's say if the game go well I don't know like I feel like there's an arc to your play which will kind of be like you come up with um a fun strategy. It's normally like I think a little more fun than most people will right. go for. Um something that's going to keep you engaged and then you go for that once w- once we've done that well, let's just lean into theme so that however that whoever that shakes out, we could just be in like a fun personality about it. Right. Um, I wouldn't say I've ever really seen you get very salty unless somebody's really coming down on you um, and like you specifically. Yeah, that, that happened one time in a game of Avalon and it almost forced me to never play Avalon again. Oh, uh, that game. That game can totally do that, though. Yeah, well, I it was... If there for a while, I felt like Avalon was a game that actually attacks character, and I don't like feeling like my character's being attacked. And uh, one of my best friends in the world, Connor, we've talked about him. Everybody knows Connor, too. He's infamous for his confusing legal text play. Mm-hmm. Um, but Connor, uh, one time during Avalon, uh, he just stood up and like put his hand in front of me and shut me off from the rest of the group when I was trying to explain why I was good. And he just yelled over top of me, and it made me so uncomfortable and mad that I actually forgot we were playing a game for a second and flipped my card over to show everybody that I was good, and I stormed off. I shoved my chair in, and I walked out of the room, 
and I had to do a lap around the house before I felt like I was okay enough to come back in. So I don't, I don't like my character being attacked, and I think that, that uh, is why I try to dis- dissociate it with the game, even though the game is a lot, you know, is, is a social game in a lot of aspects. I think there's a lot of people that have that experience with those types. Of, I think that's why I like One Night Werewolf so much is because there's not right. really enough time for it to be about your specific character because it happens so quickly There's and everything is changing so much that there's no consistent like, oh, well, we always think so-and-so mm-hmm. is it. Um, I played Avalon with some strangers one time and that was not a good experience because for the same reason that I was meeting a bunch of people for the first time and I was getting like their read on me in general in this game. And their read on me was like, he's the bad guy. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to what he has to say. He is wow. a liar and a tricksy and he's false. Wow. Um, That's wild. And yeah. And I honestly, I did. I got kind of salty in a game of Avalon with a bunch of strangers, which is not a good look. Not a That's good not going to help. Not a good That's look. not going to help you either with the overall meta of the game. Right. Uh, let's move on into like TI four. How? Because I feel like so in TI three, and I and and forgive me if I'm if I'm wrong here, but I felt like in TI three you didn't have the the firmest handle on the game. Like you are you are a fun and and that all, this also though could be true of basically everybody that's involved with this show. Um, we've all never been better at this game since since the show started, basically. Um, but back in TI3, it felt like, uh, or you were telling me anyways before, that you felt like you maybe didn't have the strongest handle in the game. Could you talk more about that? Yeah, it, you know, uh, I was telling you beforehand that, you know, it felt like if you go ask 22-year-old EJ, you know, hey, what's, uh, you know, do you think you have a handle on TI? I probably, you know, very... With a lot of bravado, would have been like, yeah, of course, you know, I play TI three all the time. But mm-hmm. it it did feel like, uh, you know, every single game of TI three that we seemed to play, it felt like there was always something that kind of hung us up, you know. And it, yeah, and I would say us, uh, but mostly me. There would be things that I would forget. There would be things that I didn't have a firm grasp on. Uh, one of the things that I felt like the game should be that it wasn't was more like a game where I get to uh, be like this, you know, I always wanted it to be more like D&D where a charisma Mm -hmm. check would be better than, uh, you know, uh, a strength check, right? Like uh, where right here, I would love to just be able to use charisma to take this planet, but I can't, Right. you know, like that was, that was kind of how I wanted the game to be. I wanted it to be more about how good of a social player I am versus how bad of an actual technical play, player I mm-hmm. was. Because I was a very, very, very bad TI3 player. I did not play the game well, uh, but I had fun playing. Um, but it, 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 I just, you know, I, I leaned into the theme a lot more in TI3. Once TI4 came out, I felt like, okay, like it's time to just start playing the board game. instead right. of Because it, it, it took away a lot of the, the kind of thematic elements uh, initially, but you can kind of, you know, and, and made them more mechanical, right? Like it took those thematic elements that you wanted to use as, as maybe the Ixcha and TI3 and it made them an actual mechanical thing in TI4. Yeah. I mean, and I would say the tone of, uh, by nature of, of us playing this game and being so more con- like connected to everybody that plays Twilight Imperium, it, it's just gotten a little more serious. It's, it, I think it's something interesting to note that we haven't really talked about in the show is that in in our history with playing this game, uh, it has become more of a game and less of a goofy theme thing, which is definitely, it used to be way goofier oh, man. Uh, as far as us playing it. Uh, oh, we used to have the goofiest time playing that game. Yeah, I mean, we used to have, you know, <laughs> the, the secret conversations, which we, we have still tried to preserve that part of the game. Um and it's really just it to, to try and honor our younger days. But that stuff used to get out of control. I mean, like, people having, people walking away from the game every 30 minutes to have some heated discussion about something that probably didn't really matter, really, at all. 
Right, um, but over one planet next to Mechatol yeah, Rex. Right, right. Like that's like, that's stuff we could have discussed over the table that we just didn't. You know, we did a lot of that. Like we wanted to make the game more to have a lot more intrigue than it naturally had. Yeah, and it, did, I, it didn't. It doesn't have a whole lot of intrigue. There's just things you have to do to win the game, and it's very clear what those things are. Right. There's far less than we than we actually wanted there to be in right. the game. Uh, one thing that like you were talking about how much of a handle you had on TI3. I actually feel like it's, I probably had less of a handle than I think, because I do remember. So th- there were um, in TI3, there were these things called transfer actions. <laughs> I was just about to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. So like, here's, here's the thing about transfer actions. Um, I couldn't tell you how they work right now. Uh, and I don't think I ever really understood how they worked. The only person that understood the rules, I think, to transfer actions were Matt, and my attitude about them was that Matt would use them, and they seemed really effective and pretty nice, actually. Um, But I didn't really understand how to use them, so I would just, in my head, be like, well, I'm going to beat Matt without knowing how to use (laughs) transfer actions. And that's something I used to think. Like, like, every time he would use one, I would be like, well, I I don't need those to win. Um, That's the kind of crappy things I would think. So I I don't think I really had the strongest handle on TA3. Like, for the finer points, anyways, there was so much to know. I actually actually tried my first game of TI4. I tried to execute a transfer action. Oh really? <laughs> I'm not even messing with you. I and I just like, assumed hey, th- they were those still are gone in, now. <laughs> I, I just assumed they were still in the game, and they were just like no. And I was like, oh no. But yeah, I I do remember transfer actions very vividly, and I remember Matt being the most effective person at them. I I always used them for like one or two ships. Matt would use them on entire fleets. Like it was insane. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't even remember, like, if you could produce off of them or, like, how something, that yeah. worked. Yeah, something happened. We're really going to show how much we know if we keep talking well, about it. <laughs> well, so that's going to happen at the end of this, yeah. anyways, with the game that we're going to play. We're going to show how little uh, we know. We're the, we, me and you, I feel like the thing we've got in common is we're more of the, we're here for the other people, kind of. Like, I, like, what you were talking about with my level of saltiness, that, that whole thing of, like, me, uh, trying to play mind games with people. Uh, I don't love that about myself, but I am definitely more of a, like, I will play against you than I am playing against the The faction on the board. Yeah. Which this is why I'm not good at TTS. Like if you've ever watched me play on TTS and been like, Hunter is not very good at this game, which is how I feel. You'd be surprised at how good you are in person versus how good you are on TTS. Well, yeah, I just feel like I don't get to, I don't get, my meta doesn't really work on TTS. I think there's a lot of people like this where because it's a virtual space and you don't have that ongoing connection, uh, I think it's just really difficult to to play the way that I like to play, which mm-hmm. is to say little pointed things at you <laughs> over the co- and wear you down over the course of six hours. Um. <laughs> right. I think, yeah, I think there is kind of a bit, and like, I want to put this in the most delicate way I can. There is kind of a bit of an intimidation factor that you use. And it's not like mean, it's just, it's just a man. A hunter could really kill my whole fleet. And it's just like the look on your face can communicate that versus on TTS. I, you don't have that power of just being like, of like looking somebody in the eye and being like, "Hey, I'm gonna come destroy your whole stuff." Yeah, uh, I mean, there ha- there have been times where I had to save my game just by threatening someone a lot, mm-hmm. uh, and they didn't know that I had nothing, but I had to pretend like I had a lot going on, or uh, like basically that like I've got to pretend I've got some really good action cards here. Um, and a lot of that doesn't work on TTS because you can't see the look on my face. You can't see what I'm looking at that you have. I like to look at people's mm-hmm. stuff a lot oh, in a man. very aggressive way. It's very good. Um, but you can't, I don't know. So I, I have had a lot of difficulty translating my style of play to TTS, which is frustrating. Um, yeah, how I do think... you feel about TTS, actually, now that, now, now that we're on that? Uh, TTS is good. Um, yeah. I think that 
there's not really a better way to connect an entire community of people uh, in terms of a game like this. Like, mm-hmm. if I'm going to go play something like Twilight Struggle, I get it if I have a friend a thousand miles away that wants to play Twilight Struggle, that's one thing. But, like, uh, I have a physical copy. I would much rather play a physical copy of a game like that where there is, like, an intrigue element to it in terms of I am playing against you, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. In games where I do feel like I am playing against people, I'd much rather play against people in real life versus, you know, and it, it does take that element away. Uh, TTS does. It does take the element away, and I think it does make me and you, apparently, a less effective player uh, because, you know, I, I'm the same way. I'm not I'm not the same way in terms of, Hey, I'm I'm Hunter. I'm going to I'm going to sit here and look at all your stuff deliberately to make you nervous. Like I'm not like that. Mm-hmm. But the way I play is very much uh, has to do with my presence as well. Like it's not it's not going to translate as well on TTS uh, because I telegraph a lot of the things that I'm doing on TTS versus mm-hmm. versus in person. I'm much better at kind of uh, you know uh, deflecting and things like that. Uh, whereas that social game just isn't there in the same capacity. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, actually, I kind of want to talk about the tournament a little bit now, um, <laughs> like commentating it. How did you feel about uh, commentating the finals? And we did a little bit of commentary on the game, the last semifinal game. Mm-hmm. How did you, how did you feel about that? And how did you feel about the tournament in general? Tournament was really interesting. I mean, I think in the end, you know, Nine of Spades won the tournament. Uh, deservedly, a very, very good final game. One of the mm-hmm. one of the best games of the tournament. I was very proud to see was the final. So uh, that felt really good uh, to see that that you know at the very end that I think five of the six, or was it all six of them could have won that round. It was it was at least five of them could have won that round, and they oh, all sure. made a move to win. Like it was that good of a game, and you know. Uh, you couldn't help but just sit back and appreciate how good it, you know, how technically good those players are, and yeah. I think that's what TTS really does. It will find the best Twilight Imperium player. It might, it might not find a guy who wins every time in person, but it will find a guy who will, you know, who, who, you know, your tournament found a guy who is probably the best technical player at the game. Uh, and and that final and you could have picked any six of those people and they and any one of them winning I would have been like yeah that person is one of the best like and some of those people being able to translate that that above the board strategy into TTS's final game I thought was very impressive you know Vaughn was somebody we were talking about uh, before the tournament as somebody who's a social player like uh, I believe it was Vaughn wasn't it uh, Vaughn's the diplomat yes that's mm-hmm. and that's what I mean like. How do you, how do you, you know, the fact that, that Vaughn made it as far as they did uh, in that tournament, uh, being somebody who's, uh, you know, an above the board type of player is very impressive. That's, yeah. you know, in, in, a, in a setting where the game is going to be a lot more technical, it's going to be a lot more about what's going on on the table. And it's going to be a lot more about my tone of voice, right? Like, right. And and Vaughn was able to use that and 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 mitigate a lot of losses throughout his tournament because of it. Yeah. Um. What do you? How do you feel about commentating uh, Ti versus? Because you you commentate um, hockey, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm a play by play announcer for the University of Arkansas. Um, is yeah, it com- easier to commentate hockey than it is to commentate TI? What, what do you what do you feel like are the challenges in commentating TI versus hockey? Hockey, uh, when you're doing play by play in hockey, for instance, it's it's very much it's you have to be good at translating what you're seeing to what you can say very quickly. So uh, you know you have to be able to know who has the puck, know where he's going with the puck, what side of the ice the puck is on, uh, where that thing is going. Uh, you know, there's a lot that you have to process quickly and then be able to to describe it to viewers at home. What is going on versus TTS commentating on a on a game of TI is more about uh, listening and, and understanding. Uh, it's more about trying to see what a player's motives are. It's not as reactionary, right? Like. Uh, when you and me commentated TI, the best parts were reactionary because of the build-up to them, right? 
the best parts were, whoa, you know, you get to yell into your mic because you're like, because there are things that absolutely blow your mind. You can hear the players talk all they want, but all of a sudden somebody activates a home system and it really is unexpected. And right. so there really are those unexpected things. In hockey, there there really isn't. You know, a guy scores a goal, that's what they're trying to do. You know, right. <laughs> like, like that's that's the whole goal. Like that's that's what they're trying to do. And even though you try to generate enthusiasm that way, it's not a surprising element of the game in a lot of cases. And in terms of TI, though, there are a lot of those surprising elements. And it's being able to try to tell a story uh, up until that point, or maybe you know, commentate in a way like uh, you know, how do I how do I like this person's game? Technically, what does this person need to do? You know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts that can kind of get out of hand really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really like that breakdown, actually. I feel like I asked you a pretty hard question, and like you had a really good answer to it, which was, yeah, I, I, I like the One of the challenges, I think, in commentating TI is that there is no need for that type of the pucks over here type of uh, commentary. Like there's mm-hmm. nothing visually that I need to tell you that you can't see for yourself. Right. Um, so a lot of the commentary always feels like it's speculative. We're breaking down things and being like, here's why this mm-hmm. player might be behaving in this way, mm-hmm. depending on what they have. Um, right. At least w- with the way me and you would do it, because we couldn't see what uh we couldn't see any of the hidden information which i i personally liked a lot i don't i don't know i like that a lot better than being able to see everything i mean think of it like a like a viewer i mean if you think of it like a viewer on a game show the unexpected i feel is more exciting for the viewer uh yeah. there is there is a hint of dramatic irony you can get by knowing everything right uh it's almost like a play in that way and mm-hmm. if you're trying to execute space opera, maybe that is the way to go, you know? Right. Uh, you're trying to say, oh, well, I do know that this person can't play this. And you're sitting on the edge of your seat like, oh, man, I know he's going to get him. I know he's going to get him. That irony is good, but also good is, oh, does he have it, is also a very good feeling to be sit- sitting there and wondering, uh, I wonder if they have it. I wonder if they have it, is also kind of the anticipation of, of trying to project is – is I think just as fun as knowing everything that's on the table. Yeah, that's that that's so good actually because it's like if if you know all of the elements, then we get a lot of moments that you couldn't get otherwise. Like when a player is lying, boldface lying. If we know everything, we can laugh that right. because like oh, we all know that player is lying. Right. However, if a player boldface lies about something they have in their hand and we can't see everything, then we are just like, oh, are they lying? Are they not lying? Like, so I don't know. I don't know which one is better. And I really, before we do um, another tournament, which I'm going to, since Matt, since Show Daddy's not here, I'm just going to go ahead and like, just say that there, there will definitely be another one, um, mm-hmm. even though Matt is probably crying right now hearing me say that. But of course, we're going to do Katie's that again. It was so much. Yeah, Ka- yeah Katie, <laughs> Katie's going to give me a call later and be like, there's, there's never uh, another tournament. No, Hunter. there's no more tournaments. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I mean, I th- I think I th- I think there definitely is uh, a place for something like that uh, in the future. Probably not in the same way, like we've said a million times. Uh, but I think uh, there's a lot of room for you know you and Rue and and a lot of other people in the community to uh, to possibly for us all to form some sort of organization that can. Uh, make a tournament happen and execute a tournament. Um, I feel like this has been a very, like, we've just kind of wandered around, which has actually been really fun. Uh, uh, but is there anything specific about your play style with Twilight Imperium that you want to, like, kind of get into this episode that maybe we haven't touched on or that that we kind of skipped over because we've been just kind of cowboy in this episode? I'm for it. I, I'm, you know me, they call me the cowboy. That's my nickname. They do call you the cowboy. They call... That's- EJ the Cowboy Sanders. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> they know that's that's your new oh, name. Good. EJ, EJ EJ the Cowboy Sanders. Crushed it. Uh, no, I I mean, in terms of play style, like I don't approach TI four with a whole lot of expectations, and I think that mm-hmm. that kind of helps my game in terms of of not trying to expect certain things. There's like you know, there's this uh, general um, this general idea in the community about pie slices, for instance, 
mm-hmm. you know, th- I'm entitled to this plan. I, I get this plan. Right, right. This is in my pie slice, right? Uh, I don't go into it with those types of expectations. I want to go into it with a more, uh, with a kind of a broader understanding of what the board state is, uh, go into it with a broader understanding of how players are going to try to win points. Uh, I recently won the stream game uh, with Matt and and uh, Chris and the other Chris, uh, you know, when we went up to Matt's uh, movie studio and did a game. Uh, mm-hmm. And I won that game on the back of just keeping people off of me. You know, right. I do a lot of, I do a lot of, well, I'm not doing anything right now. And while that's true, I, you know, there's obviously things I'm trying to do. I, I'm a very slow player. The longer the game goes, the more chance, the, the, the more likelihood I feel like I'm going to win. Uh, but I use that to my advantage a lot of times to try to jump out the quick leads. I, yeah. I like to I like to say that I'm a slow player, but also get three points right out of the fir- in the first round. So, you know, I I do different things that are are just trying to, you know, I, I'm not necessarily the best technical player. Anytime I play with Matt, I'm not the best technical player to take. Right. Right. right, and I know that. So I have to. You have to know how good you are at the game to try to win the game at my level. Right, I'm not. I'm not the best TI player in the world. I'm not the best TI player in Arkansas. I'm not the best TI player in the room most times. So, mm-hmm. like understanding my position helps me understand how I have to play. Do I have to play as the underdog? Do I have to play as somebody who? Oh, they're going to be targeting. Uh, you know, whenever I play with some other people that aren't Matt, I'm kind of the person people want to go after, you know? Uh, and it's not because I'm any good. It's because they know I play. So right. so it, you have to understand what your meta is in the group that you're playing with. And I think that that's something that I do a lot better than a lot of players that play with me is, is a lot of people approach the game the same way every time. And that's just not true. I will approach the game depending on who, what faction I am, who's playing at the table. I will. I, I approach the game completely differently. Uh, the map, map setup, I, I, I never approach it the same way because if I do, then I become predictable. Sure. Yeah, you're, you're, you roll with the punches. Um, I actually feel like stylistically you're a lot closer to, to my style of play than, mm-hmm. than Matt's. Um, it yes. doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel like you're trying to fit the... One, one thing that I, I feel like makes me that differentiates me from matt is that matt is like a computer trying to fit all of the data in his brain at once and a lot of time his success has comes down to like how well did he fit all of the data in but you're more like well i'm not gonna be able to do that so let's just kind of roll with the punches and stay in the moment and i i feel much more akin to that i think that our style of play benefits us against technical players i think it really does i think that Technical players will see what we have and a lot of times back off because of, of kind of the, the uh, meta that we can play against, against the technical player, right? I know what the technical player wants to do. I know what you know, people who play the game in a way that is a little bit more mechanical, a little bit more uh, you know, on the table. Um, they, I know what they want to do. I'm not as good at at getting to that point as they are, I forget a lot of things uh, throughout the game. There will be times I play a faction I never play, and uh, I forget that I have a maybe a faction ability that I didn't realize. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, just just trying to understand those things and and be able to uh, be able to know what they have and what they want to do versus what I can do, and uh, and trying to weigh those options as I go. So yeah, I'm much more a reactionary player. Versus maybe somebody who's going to control the narrative with the game. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, all right. Well, all I right. am excited because Matt has cooked up for us some. He's he's calling them rules puzzles, um, <laughs> and essentially, me and you. Uh, I, neither of us really moderated any. Actually, I did moderate a few games in the tournament. Um, and I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not the best at it. Um, some people called me out for not being very good at it, which I never said I was the best. Uh, obviously Matt's the best. That's why we had him do basically all of it. Um, but I did get called out for not being, uh, the fastest moderator in the world. Um, uh, 
And I also, like, if you ask me a rules question, it uh, I have to look a lot of them up. Sorry. Um, but we're going to play a game today where Matt has crafted for us four rules puzzles. And we're going to try and answer them correctly without... We're not looking at the living rules reference or any of the... the we're not looking at anything. We're just going with our guts here. So, and we're going to try and figure this out together. So we're both, we both uh, get the egg on our faces uh, if we don't get them right, which I bet we won't get any of them right. So here we go. Question one. If Necro uses spatial conduit cylinder on the Veilfar X, then replaces it with a different tech, when do the systems stop being adjacent? Oh my god. Okay, so <laughs> spatial conduit cylinder is that Jolnar tech, their faction tech. Wow. If if Necro uses spatial conduit cylinder on Veilfar X, so and then replaces it with a different tech, when do the system stop being adjacent? Do you have a guess? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say the second that the in the it would be once once they take that as once they replace the tech, obviously, like right away. Yeah, I would say immediately. Right. There's no way that's the answer, though. That's that, like the it can't be because it seems the obvious, right? Yeah. Well, I guess it would depend on what spatial conduits. God, do I have to look this up? Well, OK, so well, let, let's let's think about. Here away. Let's let's think about it for a second. Hold on. So Wait. it could it could no no no. You can't look it up. No no. I'm not looking up the answer. I'm looking up what spatial conduit cylinders exact text says. Oh uh, yeah no. I don't have that memorized off the top of my head. But it, it I don't know how important that 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 actually is. Um, I think what what would be the purpose of asking this? Like how how would you use this? So. I think it's like the end of the turn. Like it, I think that's essentially it wouldn't stop being so, adjacent because you switched. Right. Yeah. I would. I would think so. They. So the question is saying that they use spatial conduit cylinder and then they change. They swap that tech out. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I just feel I like saying it's, it's 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 until the end of the activation. That's what you think. That's what, I was it, says. Gonna, I was that's what say. it says on the card, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that one. Oh, that's what it says on spatial conduit cylinder. Yeah, so I would say that it, I mean, I guess you lose the tech immediately. But I no, think no, no, it, no. I th I th I, th I think that's I think I, you I, activate I, it, right? You here. use the card. It's gonna, activated until the I'm end gonna, of the activation. I'm gonna I'm gonna check the answer right now. So let's see. The answer is System stays adjacent throughout the activation. So that sounds right. End of activation. That mm -hmm. I think we got that. Yes. Um, yeah, we got, got it in one. Sure, we had to look up spatial conduit <laughs> cylinders wording. All right, question two. Uh, why are they all about Necro? Jeez. If Necro fights a ground battle and their infantry dies, but at the same time when their opponent infantry dies, they copy infantry two, does the Necro player get to roll for their infantry to be placed on the infantry two card. Ugh. What? I don't like this one. Um, no, no. This is a, this should, is a yes. No. This is a yes or no. Um, I'm gonna go with no. Well, I I don't want us to pick. I, I want us to be consistent because if we if I pick yes, then then we've then we've definitely Split got an option. Score. Let's just talk. Why do you say no? Why do you say no? Because they're copying the tech right after they beat the ground force, right? Mm-hmm. Man, that's tough. I think it... Does Infantry 2 specify if... Well... Um, I, just, I, didn't, I don't feel like that's right, because I feel like the last thing that Necro does is copy the tech, right? At the end of the, at oh, the, yeah. end of the well, combat. At what point do they copy the tech? They do copy it at the end of a combat. I think you're right. I think the, the answer the is no. I think it's at no. The, no. Let's say. Let's see. Let's see. Checking it right now. It is. Oh no. The answer is yes. They can immediately roll to try and keep their infantry. Man, I thought we had it. I. I. Okay. So that's one. We got the first one. We didn't unless get the unless one. unless they copy tech immediately after destroying a unit. 
I think that is the activation okay. is immediately after destroying the unit they copy the tech. Yeah. I think I think that's the actual window or whatever. Okay, then then yes, then yes. <laughs> so uh, so we, yes. we we yeah, we, no, we changed got it. it. <laughs> after we saw the answer we changed it to yes. Okay, yeah, so Yeah, we totally got it. two for two. Question 3. The Hakan has uh-huh. six commodities. They are the active player and attack another player in a space combat and lose. The other player plays salvage. Can Hakan trade away all their commodities before giving the defender their commodities? Oh, dang. That, Te- how te- interesting. Technically, yes. Right? No, well, okay. So salvage, uh, no, I, 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 I don't think they can do that because you, so you can trade at any time, but I believe the wording on salvage is like, would be that because they've lost the space combat, we're like already in that. Um, yeah, it would be in that timing window, right? Where yeah, it's like by the time. So yeah, you can you can trade commodities at any time, but but, not, but once you play salvage, it's over. Like, we're we're already in that window, right? right? I some, mean, that's here. Let, let let me let me point this. This is what I'm going to say for this one. Um, if you can trade away all your commodities before giving them over to the defender. That's not how that should work. So I don't care if I get this one wrong because I'm going to die on this hill for what's right, which is that salvage should have some... There should be some point to salvage, right? Because technically, like with our tournament rules, if this is true, then if anybody plays salvage on anybody, I could be like, okay, let's stay in this window. Um, I want to negotiate some trades real quick before I have to give any over to the other player. Now, I feel confident because of the question that th- he he wouldn't have put this if if this if we live in a just world. So so we definitely don't live in a just world. Are you ready to just hear the answer cuz this one makes me yeah. sad. Okay, so number 3. Yes, Hakan is the active player and can ignore the effects of salvage. So that's sad. So Hakan um, can just break salvage. Oh, I no no no. So salvage only works if you're the active player. That's basically that's oh. that's essentially it. We kind of skipped over that. I didn't I didn't really think about that aspect of it. So you can't use salvage defensively, right. basically. Okay. That makes that is a little bit better, but also, man, salvage is awful. Um, all right. So we got we got one. We we're down. We're we're trying to tie it up here with this last one. Three, so there's a lot three, of pressure. Three for three. No, that's not what happened. Um, question four. Also, I still stand by what I said about question three. Like, salvage has it rough enough. I don't need this active player garbage yeah, that's rough. Uh, on top of that. You should be able to use salvage, okay? I realized maybe... I drew this action just, card. I should be able to use it. I should be God. able to use it. Come on. There should be like a living rules reference thing where it's like, uh, n- no, this is how salvage works specifically, but that's that's not very elegant. Anyways, yeah. question four. Necro has zero planets, and all infantry are with the Alaster. They get committed to a space combat and are destroyed before the final round of combat, qualifying Necro for elimination. But Necro destroys a flagship slash war sun in the same combat round... <laughs> when their last infantry was destroyed. They are at nine points and have destroy their greatest ship in hand. Can they score destroy their greatest ship before being eliminated? Matt, you are such a jerk. Yes, This is such a mean question. They certainly should be able to. Okay, so you're saying yes out the gate. Right. Um, wait, so start, start from the beginning. The Necro has zero planets and all infantry are with the Alaster. Wait, they don't have their own home system planets? They have no planets. Zero planets. So that they're they're in they're in the capacity of the Alaster. Um they get committed to a space combat and are destroyed before the final round of combat, qualifying Necro for elimination. But Necro destroys a flagship slash war sun in the same combat round when their last infantry was are, was destroyed. They are I, at nine points and have destroyed their greatest ship in hand. I want this to be yes, only because this would be the sickest play of the week. 
<laughs> I want them to what? be able to score this because it would be cool. <laughs> God, I want to be able to look up the rules for elimination. This is this is yeah. rough. I'm I'm just trying to remember. I don't. I'm feeling like. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this being talked about. You, I've never heard of this problem. You can, you can, well, right, because it's a hypothetical, right? I mean, this hasn't happened. Yeah, but but what I'm trying to say is like I all the other things like I've heard about. I Savage. like the like second the second question. I have heard that question asked before. I just don't remember what happened. Uh, salvage. Yeah, I've heard people talk about salvage. I don't know what this is. This almost feels made up. Like, I don't even know. I feel like he might be screwing with us, actually. Can you, like, can you even score? Like, can you score secrets without having your home system? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Then, yeah. I think That's the thing that. about secrets. You think, so you say yes. Uh, I think, I don't know. I, 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 I have no answer to this one, Matt. I think, I think you no. are, I think you're a jerk for so throwing I, this one in I guess, here. I guess, yeah, this one's weird. So, zero planets and all infantry are with the Elaster. They get committed to a space combat and are destroyed before the final round of combat, qualifying Necro for elimination. But Necro destroys a flagship war sun in the same combat round when their last infantry was destroyed. So, te technically, it's a question of... The timing of the action phase secret. Yeah, does the does the point get scored before Necro is eliminated, or is Necro eliminated and therefore can't score the point? Right. Who is the active player? We haven't been told enough. I don't know that. I feel like that would maybe help. No, I don't know. I don't think it does. I think elimination does elimination. So does... we don't know. I don't think we know when. Like I don't. I don't know that there are rulings on like when elimination happens. Like. Elimination happens when no a player has no pieces left on the board, right? No, 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 no. I mean, like, I mean, like the specific window in which someone is eliminated versus right. But like I think other things I think that that's the technical definition, and therefore they are eliminated before they can score the secret, because because the space combat ends, they are eliminated, and you would have to score that secret after the space combat. You wouldn't score it during, right? I because uh, because I, I think the window on destroy the greatest sh ship is after a space combat where you've destroyed. Oh, so because well, but 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 why wouldn't elimination happen at the end of combat? Listen, like, why would I don't know, man. <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I I I think uh, I think elimination might happen first, but I I wouldn't be surprised either way. I just want to say though, like with this one, I uh, the fact that I've never heard of this one before makes me fe or or anything like this. I've never heard anybody talk about anything like this, and I am not so. I'm not like it's not like I never look at the our like rules channel or like ever see people talking about stuff. And the fact that this just feels so foreign to me makes me feel like we're being screwed with right now. Um. Are you ready to just find out the answer? Because I don't have an answer for this. This yeah. is okay. Let's see. We have no idea, and this game is an absolute mess. Okay, so there's what he's trying to say is there's no answer to that question. So there I you think, go. I think there probably would be. I mean, I think you would. Nope. Uh, I. There is no I, answer. He, I accept that, and we are he, done. <laughs> that's funny, Matt. Isn't that funny, funny that you really put such one, a contrived, weird situation that there's no answer for it? Uh, into this thing. Well, that was dun -da -da -da, the first uh, rules puzzles segment. Uh, was mostly fun, but then Matt had to troll us at the end. Was that fun, EJ? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was interesting. It definitely highlighted how little I know about the rules. You and me, not rules people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, not not really rules people. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think I'm I'm good. Okay. That was that was uh, just so you know, Matt. That wasn't fun, um, but you know what is fun? You can rate us on your podcast app of choice, especially Apple Podcasts slash iTunes. Uh, check us out on Twitter at Space Cats P Space Cats Pod for game updates and announcements. Oh, and also 
Um, I was recently on an episode of this podcast called Dumb and Busted, which is a true crime podcast, a true crime comedy podcast, and it was really fun. You should check it out. Uh, I was not on the most recent one, but the one before that. It's called Cheese Sandwich, and uh, I'm pretty good on it, honestly. Like, I'm pretty happy with it. Normally, when I'm on other podcasts, I don't think it's very much fun, but this was a lot of fun. Um, You can check out our Facebook for announcements, and you can ask Matt questions about whatever like maybe you could even ask him about that last thing he did to us um check out the uh, yeah it was uh check out the twilight imperium subreddit for our weekly posts and discussions um check out our patreon to vote on game two that's a big one you need to do that because we need to know it, whether we're going to be talking about dune or whether we're going to be talking about root the game or whether we're going to be talking about Game of Thrones, Mother of Dragons, because we're definitely not going to be talking about diplomacy. That's over. <laughs> that is done. I will say, Sorry. Pick, make sure you pick a fun one, guys, because I am going to have to play this one. Yeah, whatever you pick, we're going to have to play, so please make it good. Um, check out the Discord uh, for fun conversations, and uh, you can get some of your Patreon benefits there. Um, and also, I, Hunter Donaldson, am a comedian You in, based out of Portland, Oregon. You can see me every thursday at a show called earthquake Hur- hurricane that's at ford food and drink and then also i have a show every sunday at the alberta street pub called comedy is everything and that show uh starts at nine um ej any yeah. final words for this episode do you have a moment of zen for us i don't have anything you're gonna have to cut that because that no, is... I'm not going to cut that. That's going to be how it is. <laughs> it already ended. We're good. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you for listening to Space Cat's Peace Turtles. And thanks to Ben Prunty for the use of his music. You can find more at benpruntymusic.com and benprunty.bandcamp.com. Pax Magnifica Bellum Gloriosum. <laughs>